Minerva Milano 596-2, This video is part of a hobby project with the hope that it could provide useful information. If you see or hear something horribly wrong in what I do, it might be helpful if you took the time to let me know. This was a cheap radio receiver for IM and FM in a plastic case, and the front side painted white. The original model had a couple of decorative metal sheets, which the unit under restoration lost, making the face of this radio appear particularly sad. A warning written on the back panel recommends unplugging the radio before removing it, clarifying that the radio chassis is connected directly to the mains. Also using the phono input is not recommended unless the radio is powered through an isolation transformer. The bottom of the radio is covered by the same perforated panel, exposing the components under the chassis to involuntary contact to pointed objects. The radio has an autotransformer and some filaments of the vacuum tubes are connected in series. After a first inspection, the IM section appears severely damaged, the antenna coil has been destroyed, as if it had been stabbed, possibly due to an attempted alignment using a long screwdriver from outside the case without removing the perforated panel. Luckily, only one part of the antenna coil has been ruined, which is not directly involved in the tuning process. Therefore, it could be easily rebuilt. Later, more damage in the same section will be found. A connection of the oscillator coil was snapped and a capacitor was stabbed too. Even though the IM section was not working anymore, the radio must have been used for the FM. In fact, the radio shows a filter capacitor in very bad condition, which might have been the cause of more damage that will be discovered later. After changing the electrolytic capacitors and the dial scale light bulb, the radio is tested using an isolation transformer and a dim bulb tester. The radio is set to operate at 220 volts AC. But when the radio receives just above half of the expected voltage, something happens producing some smoke and shorting. This happened already, and then all the capacitors and resistors in the area where the smoke appeared were changed, because it was impossible to identify the component that was causing the issue. So, as the smoke appears again, it must be something else. It is the socket of the rectifier tube, which is so deteriorated that now it is shorting. After changing the socket for the rectifier tube, another test is done with the radio. This time there is no short and no smoke, but the loudspeaker offers only some crackling noise and no station can be received. It turns out that the final amplifier tube is working, but the other tubes receive no B+. In fact, one part of the primary winding of the audio transformer is open. Luckily, like for the antenna coil, this damage is not fatal, because this part of the primary winding was used only to reduce the hum generated by the previous stages. A resistor is put in place. 
The final chosen value is 100 ohm, but other higher values have been tested for some reason that will be explained later. At the moment, the IM section is still to be repaired and only the FM can be tried. Only a faint signal can be received, maybe due to a weak tube in the FM tuner module or in the detection section, or maybe it is a misalignment problem. There are no new tubes available during this restoration, therefore only other used tubes are tried, looking for something that maybe can work better. It is time now to take care of the IM section. The oscillator coil is to be repaired. Then also the stabbed capacitor is replaced and the antenna coil is fixed, winding as much as possible some copper wire around it where the original destroyed winding was located. An adaptation is also made for a coaxial antenna connection so that a loop antenna can be used with this radio. Please notice that for the antenna connections, safety capacitors are used. Finally, the IM section starts working, although for now, there is still the need for an antenna preamplifier to be able to overcome a very important interference from a nearby deteriorated alarm system. After replacing the vacuum tube in the FM tuning module, some stations can be heard, but a couple of stations play intermittently. This is a hobby project, and I still don't understand how FM works in the tuning module or in the detector section. What appears particularly strange is that by reducing the power voltage, the reception becomes stable. I would appreciate if someone could help me to understand what is happening here. Is it possible that just a poor tube in the F and tuning module could do this? The radio had originally three tube sockets that appeared significantly darker than the others. In the meantime, one of them has already been changed because it was shorting. It seems now appropriate to also change the sockets for the final audio amplifier and the detector tube. Considering the strange behavior of the FM reception that might appear intermittent, considering that testing the detector tube it appears weak, considering also that the tube is not going to be changed, Three small signal silicon diodes are put in parallel to the tube ones already in the new socket. The type 1 and 4148 has been used for this purpose. Does this solve the issue? Unfortunately not, but it will be beneficial anyway also for the IM reception. As the radio seems to work better when it receives slightly less voltage than it would be available, maybe incorporating the dim bulb in series with the mains would be beneficial. A very small 60 watt halogen light bulb is installed on top of the chassis. 
This would also be beneficial in case of future bad failures, although it has been already planned to install a fuse. However, this input voltage reduction is not enough to solve the FM issue, and a further voltage reduction is not recommended because in that case the tube heaters would not receive enough energy. Maybe it is about the B+. In fact, no data regarding the expected voltages in the circuit was published by the factory. Therefore, different values for the resistor that is bypassing the open winding in the audio transformer are tested. even though the satisfactory value for a decent FM reception can be found. The IM reception becomes too weak. Therefore later, instead of increasing the bypass resistor mentioned above, only the resistor that is feeding the B plus to the FM tuning module is changed after trying again different values. Non si accorge della moto che sopraggiunge senza colpe, ma troppo veloce da via delle rovine. Is this a good practice? I don't know. But it works with the tubes that are installed in this unit. La guida della sua Guzzi California 1400 Touring. The cabinet is made of some type of plastic. It is not Bakelite. And the front side is painted white maybe to give the impression that it is a separate component. After washing it, no damage can be found, but the scratches and the stains on the surface remain very visible. Considering that this unit is missing one or two metal plates that should appear on the front, it has taken the decision to paint the cabinet with a uniform color and to replace the grill cloth. Also, one button needs to be repaired as it has a hole in it. Some hot glue is used as a filler, but then the four buttons are also painted to match the new color combination. Later, the knobs will also be cleaned using an abrasive pad. Even if your home electrical distribution system is protected by a perfectly operational differential switch or RCCB residual current circuit breaker, even a current below 30 milliamps could cause important complications if it traversed a human body. The chassis of this radio is connected directly to the mains and the location of the power switch would not be able to prevent from electrocution if the chassis were touched when the radio is turned off. The first step for making the radio a little bit safer is to connect the chassis to the neutral line and to move the power switch to the hot line. The problem is that some countries use unpolarized electrical sockets making impossible to know if the plug is inserted correctly or if it is reversed. Using a bright LED and a resistor, the plug could let the user know if the insertion is correct or if it isn't.
This is wrong. Correct. In this case, it is preferred to show if the plug is inserted in the wrong way because it is advisable to avoid letting intentionally flow currents between the hot line and the ground for a long time. To make sure that the plug is inserted correctly, one should try both positions to verify that the LED becomes very bright only on one side. In the radio cabinet there is some extra space that could be used for adding a relay that would cut the power completely if the power plug is inserted in the wrong way despite the LED being fully bright. Also two fuses are added, one for each line, because despite all the safety measures that can be taken, the power plug could still be inserted in the wrong way and a short to the ground could happen also if the line was supposed to be neutral. Everything fits nicely in this radio cabinet. Even though the radio has a transformer with an input voltage selector, as there is a relay and also a dim bulb that could work only at about their nominal voltage. To avoid confusion and damage, the connections to the voltage selector are modified, so that only the configuration for 220-240 is connected. The safety measures described above cannot guarantee against the chassis becoming hot, therefore, it is important to protect with safety capacitors what might have something to do with the chassis and might be reached from outside the cabinet. In particular, the antenna connection for FM has been significantly modified so that every socket is mediated by a capacitor. Please notice that in the original chassis, this metal ring of the final amplifier tube socket was connected to the B+. Obviously, along the restoration process, the B-plus line has been diverted. In this radio model, the mixer tube has a piece of metal used to shield the circuit of the oscillator section from the intermediate frequency stages. This piece of metal protrudes up to the push-button switch module, actually touching its terminals. Therefore, at the end of this piece of metal, there is some cloth tape. However, this cloth tape insulation is badly deteriorated by now, and the bare metal can easily touch the connection to the B+. In the pictures, the two wires, respectively red and green, are two B+, lines. While replacing components in that area, moving these wires caused the contact with the metal plate, making very loud sparks. The radio was functioning under the protection of the included small dim bulb, which was just providential. The cloth tape has been replaced with a piece of transparent heat shrink pipe. If you are restoring this radio model, or another one with the same chassis, Please take care also of this insulation before trying to power it on. The dial cord of this radio unit must have been replaced along its life because the one that is in place is made of thin fishing wire. It works very well anyway. The dial glass is made of plastic. In the written documentation that comes along with this video, there is the picture of the scan dial glass that can be reproduced with the original size, printing it on an I3 sheet. See the links in the description of this video under the Show More tab. The only documentation available for this radio from the factory is the schematic diagram. No information is given regarding the alignment. Observing older schematics of Minerva radios, 
it can be noticed the consistent usage of 470 kHz frequency for the IF transformers regarding IM reception. As for FM, it can be guessed that the intermediate frequency should be 10.7 MHz. First of all, one should identify the correct IF transformers. The largest cores are used for FM. The two IF modules seem to be installed reciprocally reversed, but that was done on purpose to make sure that the FM discriminator would not be touched unless it is really necessary. IM alignment. The radio should be switched to receive IM. The variable capacitor should be moved to the position corresponding to the lower frequency on the dial scale. Using a coupling capacitor, a modulated signal at 470 kHz is fed into pin 2 of the mixer tube and the voltage of the automatic gain control is read with a voltmeter. The MI intermediate frequency transformers are adjusted to obtain the most negative voltage on the AGC line, using the lowest possible intensity of the modulated signal. FM alignment. The radio should be switched to receive FM. Using a coupling capacitor, a non-modulated signal at 10.7 MHz is fed into pin 2 of the mixer tube. The voltage across the electrolytic capacitor connected between pin 2 of the detector tube and ground should be read. Please notice that this electrolytic capacitor is connected with the positive terminal to the ground. Only the 3 FM intermediate frequency coils are adjusted to obtain the most negative voltage across the mentioned capacitor, not the low minus 1 volt though, using the lowest possible intensity of the non-modulated signal. FM discriminator. If the sound of well-tuned FM stations appears distorted, it is necessary to also align the FM discriminator, using the coil that has been left on purpose in an uncomfortable position, probably to discourage tampering with it. Two perfectly identical resistors of about 100 kilo ohm should be connected like in the picture. An additional 10 mega ohm resistor is added to ensure a high impedance reading with the voltmeter. Using a coupling capacitor, an IM modulated signal at 10.7 kHz is fed into pin 2 of the mixer tube and the voltage read on the voltmeter, like the picture shows, should be a very low value between minus 1 and plus 1 volt. While moving the core of the FM discriminator coil, it should be observed that the voltage read floats between a positive and a negative value. The value as close to zero as possible is what is needed for a proper FM detection. IM dial alignment. The radio is tuned according to the dial scale to the lower frequency that is readable on it. In this case, it is 500 meters, which corresponds to about 600 kilohertz. A modulated signal generator set to 600 kHz is loosely coupled with the antenna input and the core of the oscillator coil is moved to obtain the maximum output signal. Then the radio is tuned according to the dial scale to the higher frequency that is readable on it. In this case, it is 200 meters, which corresponds to about 1500 kHz. The signal generator is set to 1500 kHz and the oscillator trimmer capacitor is tuned to get the maximum output signal. The same is repeated until there is no more adjustment needed. Then, the same procedure is done with the tuning coil and trimmer capacitor. The FM dial alignment has not been modified in this unit and it is not recommended unless it is really necessary.
what you see is the modified, full schematic diagram of the restored unit. The B plus voltages are the values that have been read on this modified set. The original expected B plus voltages are not known. If you are looking for a better detailed diagram or for more information, you may check the written documentation that comes along with this video. See the links in the description under the Show More tab. The components that have been replaced. The labels that have been salvaged. The radio is tested in an apartment building using an indoor wire antenna starting from the broadcast band. Medium wave. The noise comes from appliances used in the neighboring apartments. The wire antenna used for the FM reception is less than two meters long. This radio is looking for a new home. I will be happy to donate it to someone who will treat it nicely, hopefully in my local area. The new owner should be aware of the basic attention that is needed using old electronics, and this radio in particular. Plug orientation. When you insert the power plug in the power outlet or an extension socket, please try both ways and verify 
that the LED becomes bright in one and only one of the two alternatives. If the LED is always bright or if it is always dark, something is wrong and the radio should remain unplugged. The radio should not be used. Otherwise, please choose the orientation in which the LED remains dark. Who can operate the radio? Don't let a child operate this radio. Don't let anybody else operate this radio unless they are completely aware of the hazards and of the responsibility that they take in doing it. General Common Sense Caution all metal parts are connected to the mains even when the radio is turned off do not touch any metal part before removing the plug from the mains if a radio knob comes off remove the plug before trying to put the knob back in place never insert any object neither a liquid through the holes of the panel that covers the bottom and the back of the cabinet do not use water nor inflammable agents in the proximity of the radio. Do not operate the radio with wet hands. This radio can never be placed in a bathroom or in other places near sinks, showers or bathtubs. This radio develops heat. Do not operate the radio near potential inflammable objects including curtains. Do not cover the radio. The radio must have enough space around and above for cooling airflow. Do not let the radio playing unattended for a long period of time. This radio is like a little oven and there is some fire hazard. Power. This radio can operate between 220 and 240 volts AC only with an effective ground connection and a neutral line. Do not use an adapter that does not provide a ground connection. The safety measures that have been implemented for this radio would be useless. If you would like to contribute to this project, donating old electronics equipment or old radios in whatever condition they might be, provided that you do not feel any attachment, that could be helpful for my next restoration documentation and video production.